as you'll see at the later stage of the track, I mean, it's don't feel that something has to stay in the track. Like here, you'll probably see the difference. I, I do recall at a later stage, I, I remember changing the kick in the bass, and it's quite a dangerous thing to do to um, start changing things at a later stage in the track because you know you you leave areas for these frequencies to sit, and then you're going to put completely different dynamics in the track, and then suddenly things don't work together. But again, this is part of the process of making the track. You know, I'm happy we heard the leads sound really good, really in your face, bright, powerful. So I'm happy with that. So it's part of the process of getting the other the other parts to fit round, you know, those leads to make it sit underneath, happily sit underneath. So now here I'm I've got the kick and the bass. It's an idea that I'm running with. I like the pattern of the bass, which is the important thing. That's what I like, the groove, it, it seems to fit. And it's not cluttering underneath of, of the melody. So I'm happy with that part. But I did think afterwards, okay, I'm not 100% happy with the, the the sound of the kick and the bass. I just change them, but not the MIDI parts. I've got a good percussion thing going here. It's got a nice groove going. Um, it's not that I'm lazy. I I just save things and put them in stock. When I when I spend a lot of time processing a hi hat, I don't see the point of doing it in in every single track. Sometimes I it, it's all time. D depending really, you know, because I'm so busy, I'm, I'm traveling, I'm flying here, there and everywhere. Sometimes when you come back, I could have done a weekend, just gone to Brazil for the weekend, I'm back on Monday, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, and I, I've only got a window of three or four days till I'm off again. So, I keep things in stock, if I spend a lot of time processing a lovely hi-hat, what's the point of sitting there, spending a day processing some other hats again, when you've already got them in stock? So I kind of recycle stuff and I keep them in, in, in uh, nicely organized in my hard drive, of a section of nice open hats that I've done. This is over the years, and I and I find it saves a lot of time, you know. And but it still is also important to to experiment and try new patterns and new sounds, etc. But I have got such a whole range. Measure I've been producing for like 15 years now, so I've got some great ones that I processed over the time. So on this, on this particular track, I've recycled some old percussion, and they happen to work well. But what I tend to do is some nice drum parts etc I do write them into the track everyone's kind of original you hear with all my my productions that the little drum parts the little bongo fills they're all original and because I think they fit into the groove independently on, on each track because whatever melodies you got you know I have to write that pattern to, to fit with whatever's going the rest of the track so I might move stuff around chop it add another sound and also importantly which people completely forget when they're they're, they're putting tracks together if you've got a, cong a conga, or a tom tom, anything like that, they're in a certain key. And it's the same with a kick. So you've got to make sure that you retune those congas, etc., to the correct key of your track. So many people don't do that. And it it, it kind of reminds me of a clock ticking, a tick tock, tick tock, how the pitch of that clock is going up and down, up and down. And if you listen carefully to some tracks, you can actually hear the percussion with different tuning, like you might hear a hi-hat or something else or a clap, it's going there's different things and it's actually going out of key so remember to try and pull them in key because it might be clashing with something else that's going in the track that's that's really important what a lot of people don't do sometimes you're lucky and it just works <laughs> but but generally I'm, I'm quite anal about that and, and make sure that they are in key with the rest of the track or it'll, it'll work wherever my key changes are going that everything will sit and naturally sound good and another important thing when you're doing percussive parts like here make sure I'm going to zoom in the part here see here that's nice and tight at the beginning of the the, the sample where I bounced it many people don't forget they might bounce something across especially at a later version which I find that there was a lot of latency like in the very early Max and it's not until you discover later you could have bounced it thought that was okay and you got a, a big chunk of latency so not everything's hitting on on the beat in time and then the, uh, your, your track sounds a bit of a mess because of the loops, the percussion, any sample parts that you've got, they're all out of time. So just make sure it's nice and tight. But again, there can be fun in in uh, quantizing these uh, these audio uh, samples that you've got of loops, just to give them a little quantize. So it's got a little bit of a swing to it because sometimes it can sound too digital dynamic when everything's slap on the beat. It doesn't sound natural. The track can have no soul. So I often play around with, with, with the quantize once I've got the parts up here in the arrangement just to re-quantize it, see how it sits and gives it a little bit of a swing. So it's also worth experimenting doing that, so don't just grab chunks and put them on there. And again, the, these old recycled parts that I've 
pre-processed, they can sound really good, different, in a, in a different contours of a swing. It just changes the sound of it. So I also try experimenting like that, which I, I, I did with some of these. So they, you know, they, they, it gives it a little bit of a groove, which you'll, you'll hear here, here, here when I play it. So here, here there's a groove going, some, some kind of congas going, etc. And I've, I've actually added these here. You'll hear one here. The one here. Dong, dong. That's just taken from a sample. I've moved it around to make it fit in, and kind of you're kind of making your own loop. And a lot, a lot of people, they throw loads of loops on top of each other, which is nothing wrong with that. But also make make sure loops are not covering each other. Like you know, genuine loops, you've got to clap. And I often edit the the, the the samples, you know, just mute out that section with a clap because you've got your original clap in the track. And it might just completely cover it and the, the frequencies, you've got like four or five claps going, it, they might start phasing or sounding quite nasty with each other. So it's good to experiment chopping up loops like I have done here. You'll see there's three different loop sections there which I've I've chopped. I'll just expand it so you can see it. So I get this section here, you can see they're kind of talking to each other. That one triggers, this one answers it, and then this one speaks to it afterwards, and it carries on. So instead of having a big chunk of loops going, that you know that could have been a loop there, and it's just a, a whole mess there. And you'll hear if I solo them. See how they're talking to each other? So you get a nice groove going. So if I mute the uh, solo the kick as well. Already, you know, there's just three parts there and it's got a bit of a groove going. But you, you'll see there, just another thing up that I'll mention. Don't get frightened to use non-percussive sounds. I mean, a lot of people think, oh, I have to go to a, a drum kit to, to make sounds, but you're here. One's like a growl sound, the other one's like a crackle sound, and then you have got like a a, a, a drum sound. But you'll hear they work together. So experiment with with different, you know, different strange sounds. Get get a percussive sound and put a distortion on it. But you know, try with some weird and wacky plugins to make a really weird sound. But then add it to your track in a percussive way. And it, it adds a lot to the track, rather than just hunting through loops and loops. And, you know, here, they're talking to each other, there's a groove going, and there's, there's space for other stuff going on. OK, we brought ourselves bang up to date now. This is the actual finished project. Um, as I said, from the previous um, arrangement, things changed. I wasn't happy with the kick and the bass. Um, so here, I changed a lot. I had... I did one of my famous things with uh, a layer on top of the uh, the other bass, and sometimes like the the negative point of doing a layer, it, you're just covering a problem. You're actually getting another sound. You, you, you're you're trying to you have in your head. You're trying to make a specific sound, especially with a bass, because a bass is should, it, it can work with a layer, but generally should just be a strong, punchy sound. And I, can, I sometimes do the danger of adding layers to a bass because I'm trying to make the top end of the bass more twangy. I'm trying to make it come across, and I just end up masking too many other things. And it's quite dangerous with a bass because you know you've got these low end frequencies which are wobbling around, and you just end up with this whole wobbling mess. So I changed the kick in the bass. I think that was important. And you can see I've done some quite heavy processing. Okay, so we've, uh, I've got my new kick in place. Um, it's from my ES. 24 sampler. Uh, it's actually a kick that I used um, in the track, the Muse remix that I did with Wizzy Noise, and um, with that was in Pro One as well. It's just one of my favourite kicks. It's just a nice, tight, punchy kick with not a big tail on it. But saying you, you can con control the tail to a degree in the sampler here with the release here. You see, I've just I've pretty much got no release on the the sampler. So when it it triggers, it punches, it kicks, poof, it, it goes, it disappears, allowing for the bass to, you know, you know to do its thing. Uh, and again, the bass is a nice, tight, punchy sound. So you got punch, kick, bang, bang, in between with with the uh, the bass line, back to the kick.